what are you doing coming up Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the day after? You don't have anything to do. You don't want to go to your families. I've got a suggestion for you. Our next guest does too. Lisa Kuduling, come on in. And Lisa. Hi, hey, Amber. Lisa. So nice to oh, see you. Oh, my goodness, Lisa. Nice seeing you. Lisa, when were you in Vermont for New Year's Eve? I don't know, 1493, maybe. <laughs> no. I have no idea. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I was performing at ago. a gay comedy show and staying with yes. a friend from high school. Oh, my it was gosh. A long yes. time and, ago. And I remember that night, dinner was like two hours late, and we were going, come on. And you had to go on. And with us, but you were great, and I'm still happy that uh, you're still doing what you do. So, how did you get still started being it. a comedian? Yes. Um, well, it was an accident, like most things in my life. <laughs> I was the best woman at a friend's wedding. Uh, her husband had a best man, so she had a best woman. And I gave a tongue-in-cheek speech, and everybody came up to me after and said, where do you perform? And I didn't. And then some months later, I was at a comedy club, and there was a sign on the bulletin board for stand-up comic wannabes. And I did this class at this guy's house about three or four Tuesdays in a row. And then we had class at the comedy club itself, and it felt good. And then that was 1989, and um, been performing since then. And I started producing comedy shows in 1993. The Kung Pao Kosher Comedy, which is Jewish comedy on Christmas in a Chinese restaurant, turns 30 next year. Wow. And uh, last year and this year, I'm doing it online because of the pandemic. So people can watch it on Zoom or YouTube Live from anywhere in the world. Okay, I've heard of this before on, you know, during the, the, the Christian holidays that you Jew people, you do go out and do something different. Um, how did that start? Do you have any idea? Well, for when it's, it it's typical that um, Jewish people will go to a Chinese restaurant and a movie on Christmas. So my idea is kind of a takeoff on that. Um, there are studies that are done about why do Jews eat Chinese food? And, you know, it's family style and plentiful. And some people who are kosher would go, well, you know, just a little piece of pork, you know, nobody's going to see that. Or, you know, it's wrapped up in a wonton. It's okay. I used to have a joke about uh, Jews aren't supposed to eat pork, but there's a small clause, unknown clause in the Torah that says if it's wrapped up in a wonton, it's okay. <laughs> so 30 years ago, you started doing your, your holiday show um, in person. Did you do it in a Chinese restaurant? Where, where did yes. you perform this? I live in San Francisco. I'm currently in Florida because I came to visit my mom for two weeks during the pandemic and got marooned here for a year and a half. And now I've been flying back and forth. <laughs> my mom's 90 and she's actually now doing stand up on my online shows. It's fabulous. She talks about, you know, having the hots for firemen, all kinds of uh, other young guys she sees around. She's just things I didn't know about. So yeah, it's it's taken place in a Chinese restaurant in Chinatown since 1993, and last year and this year take place out of my guest room in my mother's house in her retirement community in Florida, and then next year for the 30th anniversary anniversary we'll be back live as well as keeping the online component since we've got people watching from all over the place and hopefully we won't have any more variants and we'll be live in person. How did it change your material, your aspect, going from the in-person in the Chinese restaurant to viral? Well, first I had to figure out how to translate and transfer all of the in-person shtick we had. So we had tables of 10 at this Chinese restaurant. And now for the people who are watching on Zoom, they can gather with friends and family in a breakout room beforehand. Um, we'd have Yiddish proverbs in the fortune cookies live. Now we have motion graphic Yiddish proverbs that open up and go with one tuchus. You can't dance at two weddings or a goat may have a beard, but doesn't make him a rabbi. Um, you know, a lot of my material since the pandemic was talking about life during the pandemic and having made fun of retired life in Florida for 30 years and suddenly I'm living in a retirement home, eating the early bird special, doing everything that I've been making fun of. 
And, you know, I've talked about a lot of things related to the pandemic, of course, not the disease itself, because there's no humor there, but just washing down groceries. I did that for a year. I wiped down my groceries and all these things that seemed like we were supposed to do them at the time. So, um, you know, we, we figured out how to do the show online and everyone has the front row seat. Nobody has parking problems. And, uh, you know, comedians have figured out how to do crowd work also with Zoom and having the person who's doing tech maybe spotlighting two people, the, the comedian, the person they're talking about. So I had never heard of Zoom before the pandemic because I don't have a real job. You know, people who work in offices know about Zoom or their lawyers or whatever kind of real job they have. But it's amazing that we've been able to keep up entertainment and culture. Are you, are, are you a full-time, are, are you a, are you a, a full-time comedian? I mean, is that your soul? I'm a existence? part-time a lot of things. Um, so I do the comedy and then I produce, now I've been producing a monthly show called Lockdown Comedy Online. Uh, every third Thursday of the month, I used to produce a monthly show in San Francisco and then the Kung Pao Kosher Comedy Show. And then I also do freelance arts publicity, which I haven't done much since the pandemic started, but um, theater and music and comedy. And I speak Spanish also. So sometimes I do um, bilingual or Spanish language press. So I do a lot of part-time things. I don't believe in doing one thing or having a full-time job or having a boss. I understand that. Or a schedule. Now, is it, isn't it amazing, <laughs> though, how we took that, the the pandemic and our situation in lockdown and found ways to still express ourselves? I mean, that's how this show started. We're in our, I think it's our 89th Sunday night. We started in that March of 2020. We said, hey, let's do something. And it's, this is where it is. It's fabulous. Luckily, we had the technology to do it, and people needed entertainment. And in the beginning of the pandemic, we had, oh, my God, 150, 250 people attending the shows. Now we have about 50 to 90. But people really needed to connect and still have culture and laugh and get outside themselves. And, you know, even though some people who were working online all day you know, didn't really necessarily want to spend more time online. That was what we all had. You know, people yes. were on lockdown. That's why I named the show Lockdown Comedy. And when I first realized that the pandemic was maybe going to mess up everything I had just uh, grown for 30 years, I was just depressed. I thought, there goes my entire career. And then this guy who's been running the um, audio for my comedy show, Kung Pao Kosher Comedy, the last dozen years, he moved into doing live stream. So he called me in like May of last year and said, I want to help you produce Kung Pao online. And I was so happy because I just thought everything that I had built was just out the window. Because, I mean, who even heard of pandemic, right? We didn't know how long this was going to last. So yeah, that's great that you started right away also. What, what can people expect if they tune in or, well, number one, how do they tune into your your show on uh, on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the day after? And what can they expect? Okay. Well, we have a couple of fabulous comedians from New York, Jessica Kirsten and Ophira Eisenberg. Ophira is on the left and Jessica is on the right. And then the lower left is my 90-year young mother, Arlene Godoldig, who's been doing stand-up on my shows since July of last year, and then that's me. So you go to koshercomedy.com, kosher with a K and comedy with a C. You can find out all the information there, and then that will link you to the cityboxoffice.com website, and you can buy a ticket either to watch it on Zoom or live stream. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to watch it on Zoom and gather with friends and family around the country, around the globe, you can get a breakout room and do that. And then we always give partial proceeds to a couple of organizations. This year is a Jewish domestic violence organization and a food bank in San Francisco area. So it's, um, it's charity and humor and community and people can log on just being themselves or being with two people or 10 people and um, you won't be alone. And that's what we always say to the people who want to come to the live show. You know, if you don't have uh, Christmas plans or holiday plans, and you don't have to be Jewish because 
you know, a lot of the humor is universal. So it's a Jewish comedy night. It's all Jewish comics doing a certain amount of Jewish humor, but not entirely. And we'll, we'll send out glossaries in case there's some words <laughs> that you don't understand. <laughs> so, so Bullseye the Clown, we've got a great comedy club here in Vermont, the Vermont Comedy Club, and I'm sure they would love to have you sometime. So I check will it out. Have to and come, when you back. Do, come back. And, and the next time you do have another project, get in touch with us. What a uh, great absolutely. guest. Amber, Amber, oh, 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 we, we have oh, a short video, video again. <laughs> oh, then let's do it. I forgot that. <laughs> It is comedy for the crowd that doesn't celebrate Christmas. Jewish comedy in a Chinese restaurant on Christmas. <laughs> Kung Pao Kosher Comedy continues this year online and invites you to come listen to some very funny Jewish comedians and sit around and eat some Chinese food that you have either prepared or ordered from your local Chinese restaurant and feel a sense of community and belonging. Well, that's just super. Lisa, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good luck. And tell thank your mama you. I said hi. I absolutely <laughs> will. Thank you so much oh, for having right. me on thank your you, show. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my. Another great guest. Yes, we want her back.